Hi friends welcome to my YouTube channel today we talk about top 10 murder victims who solve their own murders. Number 1 is bloggers last post to help police solve his murder this strange turn of events was the first of its kind. A blogger named Simon Ang recorded the events leading up to his murder and that of his sister, Sharon. His sister's ex-boyfriend, Jin Lin, had come to their apartment claiming that he wanted his fishing poles back. Simon was blogging about his weird day and the fact that his sister's ex was in the house. Minutes after that post, Lin snapped and repeatedly stabbed Simon in the chest. Then he tied up Simon and ransacked the apartment. When Sharon came home to find this gruesome scene, Lin stabbed her, too, and then returned to brutalizing her brother, Simon. Number 2 was Amar Jicho and left the key to solving his family's murder in his sock. Amar Jicho and was murdered along with his wife children, and mother-in-law in 2003. In an attempt to hide any evidence, his killers dumped his body in the ocean. What they hadn't counted on, their address was left on the body. Apparently, Cho and had come across a piece of mail while he was being held prisoner in the home of Kenneth Regan. Cho and took the letter, with Regan's address on it, and stuffed it in his sock. Number 3 is Nadine Hag at first glance. It appeared that 33-year-old Nadine Hag had committed suicide in Sydney, Australia, in December 2009. Her lifeless body was discovered with the slashed wrist in her shower. There was even a suicide letter in her handwriting, but her family refused to believe it. They had a sneaking suspicion that her violent ex-boyfriend, Nestor Gists, had staged her murder to look like a suicide. Hogg had been in a custody battle with Gists. Number 4 is Maria Martin sent visions of what became known as the Red Barn murder in 1828, William Corder thought he'd found the perfect way to get away with murdering his girlfriend, Maria Martin. He decided to forge a letter to her family claiming she'd eloped with him and all was well. At first, everyone seemed satisfied enough with the excuse that the letter provided for Maria's absence. Then her stepmother, Anne started having terrible dreams of Maria being murdered in the Red Barn. After Ren insisted, her husband finally went out to inspect the barn. 7. There Maria was, buried in a grain storage bin and wrapped in a sack with William's signature green handkerchief still around her neck. Number 5 is Catherine Ballesteros whispered her killer's name to her mother in the morgue. The body of Catherine Ballesteros was found stabbed to death. She had been knifed 33 times. There were bloody footprints on the floor, things were missing from the house, and blood was on the doorknob. Police were hopeful that some of the blood belonged to the killer. But they knew he'd have to have a record if they were going to find him. It didn't take DNA evidence to catch this guy. All it took was Catherine herself. Her spirit was hanging around the morgue watching over her grieving parents and mustered up the strength to whisper Bubba into the ear of her mother, Immer. Number 6 is Ashley Hawley dragged a psychic out of bed to find her body Ashley Hawley was only 20 years old when her sociopath of an ex-boyfriend murdered her, encased her body in cement, and buried her near his father's house. Police had long suspected Robert P. McMichael too was somehow involved in her disappearance, but they had nothing to go on. Dogs had already searched the area where her body was buried, but they didn't pick up her scent so he got away with it for four years. Number 7 is Golan Heights boy confronted his murderer from a past life allegedly, a three-year-old Golan Heights boy claimed to remember dying in a past life from a blow to the head with an axe. He almost led elders to his bones, the murder weapon, and his killer. Then the boy decided to actually confront the local man who killed his former self. Four, the man went white but didn't confess to the murder until after the bones and weapon were recovered. Creepily enough, the axe wound on the skull of the remains corresponds to the location of a long red birthmark on the child's head. Number 8 is the spirit of Teresi Tabasa possessed Remy Kua to name her killer on February 21, 1977. The Chicago Fire Department battled a raging fire that threatened to consume an apartment building. Discovered under a charred mattress was the body of 47-year-old respiratory therapist, Teresi Tabasa. The fire wasn't enough to cover up her stab wounds or the butcher knife sticking out of her chest, but police were still stumped as to the identity of her killer. Meanwhile, 
Dr. Resita's ghost was at the home of her former co-workers Dr. Jose Kua and his wife, Remy. 3. Teresita was channeling her story through Remy. Alan Showery was named the killer, and according to Teresita, the man had also stolen some of her jewelry on the way out. Number 9 is Zona Hester Shu came to her mother in visions T was winter 1897 when Alva Zona Hester Shu of Greenbrier County, West Virginia, died of what her autopsy claimed was everlasting faint. Her mother, Mary Jane Hester, wasn't buying it and not just because of the concomitant excuse for a coroner's report. Zona's ghost had to return from the great beyond to tell her mother what's what. Over the course of four days, Zona's ghost made it clear to her mother that her death wasn't an accident. Or whatever everlasting faint means. Number 10 is the ghost of Fred Fisher had to point out where his body was in 1826, Australian farmer Frederick Fisher vanished. His shady neighbor, George Worrell, waved a big red flag when he suddenly remembered that his pal Fred had signed his entire farm over to George before mysteriously skipping town. Four months passed before the ghost of Fred Fisher had had enough of the whole charade and decided to take matters into his own spectral hands. One Fred's ghost appeared to a man named John Farley and pointed toward a nearby creek before vanishing. Obviously, this freaked out Farley, but he made sure that the area was searched later. Fred's bloody and battered body was found in a shallow grave right where his ghost had pointed. Good old George eventually confessed to the murder and was hanged.